and then of course turning the engine brake back on in situations like this because the last thing you want is to run out of fuel and to burn out your brakes and to not have a cell signal and have it be 100 degrees. It's like recipe for disaster. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Well, that was the exit out of a pretty tight spot where we were mooch docking, I guess, for three full weeks. So we were sitting there for a while and it was um, tighter than what we wanted. I'm not gonna lie, I've been anticipating this moment for three weeks. Yeah. And I've been just like, every day I'd look at it and be like, how are we gonna get out of this? And it turned out to be pretty smooth actually. Just fine. Yeah, we kind of had to do our first 90 degree turn in the truck and fifth wheel which is one of the nice things about fifth wheels if you have you know the capacity to do that 90 degree turn and it got us out of there pretty slick we, we kind of just did a wide turn pulled out like a champ yeah it was good so we're headed to the dump station believe it or not we lasted three weeks on our tanks and we're pretty much on empty on fresh water and our grays are not full and our blacks not full so it was kind of an action-packed three weeks of doing things so it wasn't like a full boondocking out in the middle of nowhere but it definitely passed the test we're still figuring this whole thing out but it's gonna be pretty amazing uh, when we do get out there on those boondocking spots and speaking of that that is where we're headed now we're headed out west from Minnesota and we're headed to finish our electrical system the whole thing and get it all set up Well, here we are at good old Cracker Barrel. It's, I gotta say, it's a little different in the big RV, the bigger new fifth wheel. It's its a little more challenging. Well, yes, and it makes, it's a little more advantageous to get in early, right? And get the pick of the spots yep. before it fills up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we kind of looped around a couple times just trying to find a, a level spot. You gotta, you don't have to put the slides out, but in a fifth wheel with the opposing slides if they're in you can't get to any of the space back here so you almost got to put them out a little bit yeah i'll put them in when we go to bed yeah <laughs> yeah so we got we didn't get too many miles in today it was like only 300 but we did a full big day of waking up packing up you know going and dumping we've actually been in pack and travel mode for like nine hours so we're gonna get up nice and early tomorrow because you don't have anything to do you get up and go and that's going to get a nice extra long day tomorrow but we don't know where we're going to spend the night tomorrow night so we have a little bit of planning to do i got work to do work's calling mm, i gotta grab that we gotta grab that <laughs> bye hey are you all right they asked me sitting with a glass of whiskey eyes glazed over looking at the skyline something i didn't think about was we don't have an inverter and so i couldn't use the nc connect last night so we really had no verizon data so we had to hotspot off our phones yes back to the old days the prehistoric rving days where we didn't know well, we used to have a 12 volt hotspot. So I don't have the NC Connect permanently set up yet. I was waiting for the solar to go up first. Very soon, very soon. 
So we have a big day today. Lots of miles to cover. Ambitiously, like 670. Can we make it that far? That's to Denver Cracker Barrel, which we don't want to go to. Oh, well. So we'll stop a little shy of that. We're just gonna start. It's 640 right now. Yeah. I think we can have butts in the seat by seven. Let's go. Big, big day. But I have been using it in the truck. Since it's not permanently mounted, I just grab the antenna and the router, plug it into the truck, and we have good Wi-Fi as we're traveling down the road. And normally, you can reach the Wi-Fi uh, off your RV in your vehicle, so we didn't have to worry about it before, but I definitely need to get this thing permanently mounted because it's a pain in the butt to be moving around, and I gotta get the 12 volt hooked back up for it instead of it running off of 110. But we are still using the NC Connect full time and we are still loving this thing. My countryside. Take some time, remember night Sitting by the fire, leaning back Watching the red sky sunset Let those bare feet sway and swing Feel that warm breeze in that piece of your mind The countryside Well, here we are, home sweet home. This is a municipal park in Brush, Colorado for $25. And we're happy to pay it. Yeah, you know, 15 would be better, but 25 <laughs> is good. Well, it has 50 amp and uh, water. So that's nice, because it actually got really hot all of a sudden. It's like sunny and I'm sweaty and it will yeah. be nice to plug in. And pretty soon we won't have to worry about any of this plug-in madness. We'll be back to our usual um, Lala Shenanigans? We'll be back to our <laughs> usual shenanigans. What were you going to say? Lollygagging? I don't know. I Okay, so we ended up making it 600 miles today, which was my goal. And yeah, it's nice to plug in. It's nice to like be able to... The dog to, park. We'd, we'd pay like 10 bucks for that. Yeah, we've park. mentioned that before. There's dog park right over there. So that's nice. And it'll be nice to have the inverter make coffee without boiling water. Can plug in our Insta Connect. And you're going to do some laundry. I am going to do some laundry. I'm going to get a head start because... Remember, tomorrow we're going to a RV park, an actual RV park for two days because I have to work on Sunday. And this is going to allow me to get a little jump start on my laundry action because I have a lot of loads to do. And they take between two to three hours per load, depending on if you use express mode or not. And I'm just happy I haven't used a laundromat for so long. And now I get to use my washer and dryer. It's pretty slick. Good travel day. Happy to be here. Louis, you were grumpy today. Louis was so grumpy today. Look at how big June's tail is. <laughs> she's she's all of a sudden squirrel tail. She's all of a sudden, I think, like near her max size. She's getting there. She still has a little small head, but she might just have a small head forever. Oh, Louis, the oh. dog park where you out? Let's give him some. Let's give him some food and water. So over the past couple weeks, I was able to get some really good, kind of smaller upgrades done that I needed to get done. Um, and since we were gonna be plugging in at friends' houses, doing a lot of mooch docking uh, at my parents' and at a friend's house, so it was like 15 amp circuits we were going into. Um, so something I had in the last travel trailer was the Hughes Autoformer Watchdog. It's the surge protector, the inline one, so you don't have to plug it in to the pedestal, it's just built in line. It's actually a really simple install to do. Uh, but the cool thing about the Hughes is that it, it does Bluetooth. 
So instead of having to walk up and go look at a monitor, like I can kind of just always keep an eyeball on, on, the, on the power that's going through. So if we're at only a 15 amp uh, circuit, then I can kind of keep an eyeball on that and know what we need to turn off or run. So one of the cool things about these air conditioners that are the Coleman Mach Qs, they're only 13,500 BTU, so they're like the smaller ones, but there's three of them, um, but you can run them on low auto, and one air conditioner on low auto only takes about 10 amps of power. So you can run the air conditioner and the fridge and the lights all on a 15 amp circuit. And that one air conditioner is enough to keep this thing cool, you know, in the 80s. Like if it's gonna be in the 90s or higher, then we're gonna need a little bit more backup power. So on top of that, I did get the Bluetooth shunt installed um, so I can at least see what the batteries are at, how much power is going into them, which was kind of nice. And then something uh, kind of cool, you guys know we had the RV lock on our last travel trailer. We actually did a, a video on it, talking about the pros and cons, and we really did like it. And RV Lock actually saw that video, and they saw that we were getting a new fifth wheel, and they wanted to give us a little housewarming present, so they sent us a new RV Lock, and uh, I was excited to get that installed. And they've done some upgrades on, on their lock, so I'm actually excited to do a little bit of a video just uh, to talk about some of the new upgrade differences, and I really like what they've done. Slowly but surely we're kind of making this RV home, but the big upgrades is what's coming next week and we're excited to show you guys all about the new solar, the new lithium, and the new power package. Woohoo! Good job on all those upgrades. And I forgot I installed three soft starts up on the air conditioners. That was something I was really excited to do. Right now there's two air conditioners running on cool low auto. Right. But isn't that amazing? We're running off of two air conditioners right now. And it's literally less than 25 amps of power. It's like we could be on a 30 amp circuit and be completely fine. Yeah, that's true. Is our, our battery is not charging? Our charger it's charging a little bit, yeah. We don't have a huge yeah, charger. Yeah, you're starting to teach me something. Yeah, yeah, the charger automatically turns on. And so we could even kick on the the bedroom air conditioner. Let's say it was, I know, let's say. No, it was, we, what we could do is we could run the washing machine. Yeah, at the same time. At the same time. Yeah, so you're not gonna have to ask, like, can I start the microwave? Do I need to shut that off? Like, I'll probably still ask. Yeah. Well, it's good to know until we figure it all out. Well, here we are, day three of our 1200 mile trip to Grand Junction, Colorado. And, uh, you know, three days of big drives, it's a lot. We're just passing through Denver now, and we're about to hit the most beautiful part of the drive, which is the west of uh, Denver on Highway 70 with the beautiful river and the mountains. And we can already kind of see it off in the distance. It's pretty, my ears are starting to pop, I can feel some elevation changes. Yeah, Colorado is a special place and we're kind of sad we don't get to spend too much time here, but we're continuing on to California after a two-day stop at a KOA here. And um, it's it's been, it's I think it's good to have that two-day rest on a three-day drive like this. If we were driving straight from Minnesota to California, it would have been, you know, five full, big, long travel days, which is just tough on everybody. Next stop is Grand Junction.
So I just started with one of the big tasks I had to do before getting the system installed and I was a little nervous at first. So basically the Lynx distributor has 5 16 holes on the positive and negative input for the bus bar and the way I want to use it is I'm going to put my switch on the positive and then I'm going to put the Bluetooth shunt on the negative side down here and both this switch and the shunt have 3 8 size bolts so I had to drill out these holes just a little bit. The Lynx distributor is designed for either the Lynx BMS uh, or the Lynx shunt to be in here but the reason I don't want to use the Lynx shunt is because it doesn't have Bluetooth and I really enjoy being able to just uh, pick up my phone and have a quick glance at my system's power and not worry about having to get up and, and go look at the screen so that's the reason I wanted to do this also I think it's a little more compact and I just like the way the design is here's a shot of the proposed layout and the board I'm using got a few different options but kind of just helps me get a little bit of a visual okay the next step of the pre-planning is I had to make sure a proof of concept if you will that where I thought these batteries would fit they actually did uh, so the one underneath the stairs well there'll be two but just test fitting the one was very difficult because this tray had to come out um, the battery slides underneath and this was just too tall so I just couldn't I couldn't get it back in there so I actually had to unload everything and remove the tray to get that battery in there and it's going to be a tight fit because I obviously have to put a second one in there. Um, there's this outside spray shower water line that I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I, I might cap it off right here and just get rid of it. Uh, it's probably not something we're going to use a lot, but I might just leave it as well. I don't necessarily love having a water line going over my batteries, uh, but I'm pretty excited that the batteries are fitting. Um, and I think it's going to turn out pretty cool. I might do something interesting and leave off the gray board that's here and maybe put a little light behind here to, to shine on the batteries because normally this is all covered up with the gray boards and this section here is where I'm going to put all of the components and uh, so far so good. What do y'all think? Here we are, day four of our five day road trip from Minnesota out to California. And now that we're west of the Rockies, the heat is upon us. I knew it was gonna be hot in California, uh, but man, Grand Junction, I just looked at the forecast and for the next week, it's like 105 degrees. You know, when it's this hot out, you gotta have air conditioning, not just for yourself, but <laughs> for your pets and everything like that. I mean, it's just, it's too hot so as we're looking forward for our spot tonight you know i was going to do cracker barrel in st george but i know st george is always hot no matter what like it's just that's just a hot spot it's hot we've ran from the heat there before and now we're running toward the heat there today yeah and without the ability to run any type of air conditioner i could only imagine what it's like sleeping in an rv 100 degrees in a parking lot I'm sure it's 80 something <clears throat> by 10 o'clock at night 
So we just picked a small little RV park a little bit farther down the road. And hey, you know, no matter what rig we're in, we'd probably be, well, I take that back. If we had our system. We sys had our setup. Yes, if we had our, our system, we could at least cool it down. But but when it overnight, you know, is still 80 degrees, that's tough. Um, but that's what we're heading to do is well, put this big system yeah, in. Yeah, and we're going to really be able to put it to the test and see what our true limitations will in be. One mile. Yes. Right onto river. So our previous travel trailer, we were able to run the air conditioner all night long, on and off. We really, you know, we don't normally RV in the 100 degree temperature. We just- No, that's crazy. Yeah, this this is not a destination we would normally be in the summertime, but you can hit this temperature anywhere. We were just in Minnesota and it was 95 degrees. That's true. So yeah. it really doesn't matter and air conditioning is key. And that's why this system that we're setting up is gonna be able to power everything, hopefully, for a decent amount of time. As we've traveled so quickly from Minnesota now to the western side of the Rockies, you can really just now see how open and vast and how much this feels like the west. And I really am enjoying this entire hotshot road trip more than I thought. So going through Iowa and Nebraska are of course more plain, not so much exciting things to look at. but. I did appreciate the smooth relaxingness of it like as compared to Chicago. So I'm like, okay, this is nice, I'll take this. With the exception of that one rainstorm we drove through that was kind of stressful. But then driving through the state of Colorado was so incredible and I don't think we talked enough about how special just driving through it was and it really reminded us of our time in the rooftop tent, living there for a summer for five months, that was really special. And now to be going through Utah, you know, like how special is this drive? Yeah, Even though you're not stopping, you still get to enjoy these views. This is gonna be the entire state of Utah we go through into Nevada. And we've been almost covering entire states in a day. So Every state, yeah, new state per day. It's been pretty, pretty good, pretty fun, and it feels good to be back out west. The RV and the truck are doing great. I have to say we're really enjoying the smoothness of the independent suspension. I thought you were next going to say, and Chris is doing great. <laughs> I was getting there. <laughs> Chris has been powering through everything. Powering. The mountains were a little scary, like she said, but. It does drive so nice, so nice. And I think I even noticed our first wind day yesterday, and there was zero like wind friction on the towing this versus the travel trailer, I would have felt that for sure. Sway. Sway. It's worked out pretty well so far and you know, towing up and down the the two passes through Colorado, um, no problem, like 8% grade up and down. I think we made it to 11,000 feet at Independent Pass. We did and for those of you that are always asking about our miles per gallon, we dropped down to 7.5 during those mountain pulls. And then regularly we're sitting at like 10 and then on a good day we'll be at 12. That's what we're ranging from. Quick little pullover to use the bathroom and this is why we love Utah. It is such a pretty state. Louis, just so beautiful. We're right in between uh, services, the sign said 100 miles till the next service, so might as well use the bathroom while we can. So we're in one of those areas where it says next services 100 miles, and we just passed the gas station out right before that sign, and we had 100 miles above empty, or 100 miles above our destination to get to the gas station, and all of a sudden... Yeah, so the 
the station was 100 miles and our reader said we had 200 miles to go. Exactly. And now all of a sudden, our gas light's about to go on. It's been, it's been dropping. Our fuel has been dropping like flies and the, the cushion is down to like 25 miles difference. I think the truck is going through a regen process where it uses extra fuel to clean out the catalytic converters because we're now 28 miles out and that gas light's about to ding. And I'm having an anxiety panic attack right now. And the road kind of turned from pretty flat to now like up and down mountainous. The whole 100 miles is like up and down. And super windy and it's hot. It's like 100 degrees. I think that's the thing that stresses me out the most is like if we had to pull over and hitchhike to get fuel, you know, it's really hot for the dogs. What do we do? Take them with us? Yeah, you don't uh, find too many areas where it's 100 miles in between gas stations, but there are definitely a, a few of them out there. I had zero... Oh. There, it just hit on. I had zero doubt that it would make it because we had such a big difference in our meter. Like this came out of nowhere and then it started dropping and I noticed, I'm like, this is dropping way fast. We have 27 miles to go and I hope we make it. I do too. Oh, sweet seven mile downgrade, babe. We have seven miles going down. Oh, this is the summit right here. Oh. <laughs> that was the summit. Oh my gosh. Well, I just turned the, I've even been like messing around with, you know, trying to conserve fuel. So dropping my speed, cruising when I can, turning off the cruise when I hit a good coast and turning off the engine brake when I can get a good coast. And then of course, turning the engine brake back on in situations like this, because the last thing you want is to run out of fuel and to burn out your brakes and to not have a cell signal and have it be 100 degrees. It's like recipe for disaster. Did I miss anything? No. No, I guess, you know, it was kind of one of those things where we were we were just over half a tank when we hit that last gas station. And so I just normally plan 100 miles up to the next gas station. Didn't even think twice about it, but, you know, because sometimes that half a tank people like to fill up at. Yeah. I do too, but, like, we were still above it. So this, this is day four. There's been three of four days were stressful for me driving. One, we had this thunderstorm that was stressful. Two, driving through Colorado mountains, which really wasn't that bad. Two passes. Yeah, and now three is, like, running out of gas. <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> this is the scariest for me. Because this is, like, one thing that, like, this is not... You can't really get out of this. Do I seem stressed out to you? A little bit. A little bit. We'll make it. We'll make it. It's going to be close, but we're going to make it. It's going to be the furthest down we've ever taken our fuel tank. Yeah. Aaron already wanted that extra auxiliator, whatever tank, I don't know what it's called, that spare tank of fuel. Auxiliary. It's going to want it even more after this. Yeah, it's nice. Half mile to the exit, I see the love sign popping up over the mountain. 1.3 miles to go. Man, that is just more risk than we need to take. It's too bad because that would have been a really, really pretty drive to enjoy. And instead, I was just like a nut job the entire time. Yeah, I don't know what happened there, how that shrunk down so much. I saw it happening right before my eyes. And like when I was watching the, the miles per gallon average, it was like in like the two to five range. Wow. And go to Mavericks. I do love Mavericks. Join us next time as we reach our final destination, boondocking in Southern California, up in the mountains, away from the heat, and we complete our final electrical RV installation.